Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. A um, couple things. I've been to therapy and got my leg worked on. They worked my leg up so hard that it's literally shaking like I mean, it's shaking. Damn, that was a good workout. I ain't had workouts like that since back in the day. Maybe, maybe I need to get back in shape in case that Gallimore injury takes a little longer. You know, Jerry, I'm ready to do the turtle move. I'm ready to clog up the middle. Anyway, Drew Pearson, shout out to you guys that have been going over there and subscribing to his channel, uh, Drew Pearson, The Ultimate Hail Mary Show. Um, it's over 800. I think it was at 817 when I last checked. So 183 more. Get them to 1,000. Go ahead, subscribe to him, and let him know you came from the Joe Blue Sports Report and congratulate him on being a Hall of Famer because if we can help push him over 1,000, we're going to have him on a live stream. And we're going to see what he got to say about CD later. CD! Because CD is another one of those 88s. Anyway, anyway, there's a lot that's going on about Dak Prescott. You know, I don't know what the talking heads would do if it wasn't for Dak Prescott. Because nobody gets talked about like Dak Prescott, the Dallas Cowboys. You got Skip Bayless who said that he, he would take Tim Tebow over Dak Prescott because of what they've done in their careers thus far. He can take Tim Tebow because Tim Tebow's been cut. He's like, he needs to be out there right now. Dak Prescott. You know, I don't know what's going on. And it's a mystery. You know, and, and literally trying to stir up some shit. But here's the interesting thing. What do you think about a couple of things? Back in 2016. 2016, we had a veteran, Tony Romo. Tony Romo with the team that, you know, you looked at and said we were the catch no catch away from um, making it to the NFC Championship game. A team that we thought, man, yeah, maybe we're loaded, you know, that maybe this will be the rebound year because he's coming back from injury. And we played him against the Seattle Seahawks. And a meaningless preseason game. And he gets hurt and his career's done. I think back to 2014, that catch no catch season, where I don't believe Tony Romo played any in preseason. In fact, the first game against the 49ers, he was still coming back from the injury. And that actually started the movement of the Dallas Cowboys understanding that we need to run the football. And changed and actually brought the new Dallas Cowboys to the forefront where we relied solely on Tony Romo's arm. He didn't play in that preseason, I don't believe. But just think if Tony Romo had played in that preseason game and hadn't gotten hurt. I don't know what would have happened if we would have been 13-3, like with Dak Prescott or not. But the reality is, is do you really need to play in preseason? I'll go back a couple of years ago. 2019. That year, Carson Wentz didn't play any the preseason. They won the division. I, I hate to say it. They did win the division in 2019. Uh, Mitch Trubisky, although that's not a great example, he didn't play in preseason. Phillip Rivers didn't play in that preseason. And I know what you guys are saying. Well, you're talking about a bunch of bums that didn't play. Well, Aaron Rodgers, here's what's interesting. Aaron Rodgers didn't play any in preseason, mind you, in 2019. His team went to the NFC Championship game. I know what you're going to say, but yeah, but that was Aaron Rodgers. He's the bad man. But hold on for a second. Aaron Rodgers, 2019, Matt LaFleur, it was his first year as the head coach. Different offense, different philosophy. So the stuff that he had been doing with Mike McCarthy, be it they fought a lot about it, they weren't doing. They changed the offense. They did kind of a purge on some of the roster. 
So guys like Randall Cobb that were there, that he threw to, they got rid of. Randall Cobb was a guy who had been there his whole career with Aaron Rodgers throwing to. So you get rid of receivers that you're used to. You come in with a new head coach. You come in with a different offense. If anybody should be playing in preseason, that guy should be just for familiarity's sake. Yet, they didn't. And they were one step away from the Super Bowl. So I go back to this whole thing of preseason. Is it important for Dak Prescott to play in preseason? Because we didn't have any preseason games last year. And he was on pace to obliterate the passing record last year. I, for one, would rather see him not play in preseason and not risk to make sure that day one when we take on Tampa Bay, a game that's going to count, that he is in tip-top shape. Because here's the thing. Unlike Aaron Rodgers, who had a new coach, a new offense, new players around him. Everybody that Dak is playing with, he's played with. CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Amari Cooper, Zeke Elliott, his offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore. They've been together since Kellen Moore was a player. Everything is the same. And it's not like the Dallas Cowboys have not been working out together. I can guarantee you, as soon as Dak was cleared to start moving around on that ankle, that everybody's hanging out at his house, getting workouts in. Him throwing the ball to them. They know this offense. They know the personnel. I'm not worried about Dak Prescott playing in a meaningless preseason game. Save that for this long 17 game season that we have to do. And I mean long 17 game season. Forget the pundits and the Skip Baylesses that, that coming up with their conspiracy theories that it's gotta be something worse than this, that, and the other. It's a mystery and that he's gotta play in preseason or else it's gonna be just bad and, and so on. Guys, let's be real here. This is not the NFL of the past where when the season ended, I'm going to my other job. I'm going to go drink a whole bunch of beers. I'm going to go hang out with my family. Football now, because of the money and things that are in it, it is a 365-day year job. They live and breathe football. And for the Dallas Cowboys, who Dak Prescott and almost all of his team all live in Dallas and all do things together year-round, as opposed to Aaron Rodgers, who lives in California and says, screw you, I'm not doing any OTAs or off-season work. I'm not showing up to training camp. Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys wide receiver are probably farther ahead than any other team out there because we had the highest participation in OTAs, because we had the highest participation in off-season workouts, because we had full mini camps. As other teams are saying, we're going to do that virtual reality. This team and these guys on this offense all know each other. Stop worrying about fake juice. Whew. All right. Time to go get in the workshop and get to work. Hope you guys are having a great day. Tonight we'll be doing a Hard Knocks a live stream. And don't forget, make sure you hit up my man, Drew Pearson's. Uh, channel on YouTube. Peace.